I was asked to do a video about facet joint cysts in the spine. Facet joint cysts are relatively uncommon, but it's an important topic because it confuses patients and non-spine specialists alike. So let's talk about them, and then you can teach your non-spine specialist doctors about facet joint cysts if they ever come up for you. Hello, I'm Dr. Grant Cooper at Princeton Spine and Joint Center. Facet joint cysts are synovial cysts that form as a result of degeneration and inflammation within the facet joint itself. Now the facet joints are the small synovial joints in the back of the spine. The facet joints are at every level of the spine from the cervical spine in the neck all the way down through the thoracic and the lumbar spine. Synovial cysts are much more common in the lumbar spine than anywhere else. Regardless of where a facet joint cyst occurs in the spine, here is what you need to know about it. Now first, a facet joint cyst in and of itself is not dangerous and it doesn't necessarily cause any problems. Facet joint cysts cause problems and need to be dealt with in two situations. So first, if a facet joint cyst is pushing on something that's causing a problem, then that's a problem. The most common thing a facet joint cyst might push on is an adjacent nerve. A facet joint cyst might irritate or compress a nerve that's exiting the spine, or it might even compress the nerves as they ascend the spine in the cauda equina or in the spinal cord. In either case, this is a problem and will need to be dealt with. The second way that a facet joint cyst can cause a problem is indirectly. If the facet joints themselves are painful and inflamed, then you might get an MRI and you might see a facet joint cyst. In this instance, the pain isn't actually arising from the cyst itself, but rather the cyst is a symptom of the facet joint. What's happening is that the facet joint is inflamed, much like a knee might be. And just like a knee can swell and, you know, and cause swelling in the soft tissue, the facet joint can cause swelling. And sometimes this swelling makes its way out of the joint and fills up a cyst. Either way, the facet joint, and by extension the cyst, will need to be dealt with in this situation as well. If the facet joint cyst is compressing or irritating a nerve, then you have five ways of dealing with the cyst. If the cyst is irritating an exiting nerve root, then you can actually perform an epidural steroid injection to reduce the inflammation around the nerve. This doesn't deal with the facet joint cyst directly, but if the inflammation and the swelling is reduced, and if you also then do some exercises to help unload the spine, then sometimes that's enough to take away the symptoms that are being created from the facet joint cyst, although the cyst will remain in the same place as it was before. Essentially, with this approach, you're treating the facet joint cyst as though it were just another bone spur or some other part of the spine creating stenosis or narrowing where the nerve roots exit. A second way, and a more direct way of dealing with the cyst itself, is that you can use x-ray guidance to actually inject the facet joint itself with steroid. What you're doing in this case is you're putting anti-inflammatory medication into the facet joint, which then reduces the inflammation and the swelling within the joint, which in turn reduces the swelling in the cyst, and the cyst should shrink as a result and take the pressure off the nerve. Now the third way is to try and directly aspirate the facet cyst under x-ray guidance. The trouble with both of these injection approaches is that even when they work, they leave the capsule of the cyst intact. Sometimes that's okay and the cyst just never returns. But other times the cyst does return and causes the same problem weeks, months, or years later. A fourth way of making the facet joint cyst disappear is to try and pop it under x-ray guidance. Now in this procedure, you put a needle into the cyst, but instead of aspirating it, you actually inject it with contrast and you're, you try to pop it. Now, if there are no holes in the cyst, this can work really well. Basically, you see the cyst fill up with contrast and it gets bigger and bigger, it expands and then it pops. No more cyst. However, if there are holes in the cyst to begin with, and often there are, then this won't work because what happens is the contrast will just leak out. Also, and this is a very important point, uh, for, especially for our doctor friends out there, if the cyst is compressing a nerve and you try to pop it with contrast, you have to be very careful to not cause too much pain in the patient, and you have to be careful to not damage the nerve. 
basically as you're as you're blowing up the cyst and it's enlarging it's putting even more pressure on the nerve so easy does it when you do this procedure the spine doctor has to consider those factors when deciding if trying to pop the cyst is a good idea to begin with now finally you can surgically remove the cyst this is generally a minimally invasive surgery unless there are other problems that are going on that need to be addressed at the same time. Surgery to remove the entire capsule of the joint is obviously the most definitive treatment for a facet joint cyst. Now, if the facet joint cyst is contributing to back pain, then you really treat the facet joint cyst the same way as you would treat facet joint pain in general. That is, the cyst in and of itself isn't causing the symptoms. The facet joint is. It would be like a hip causing pain and then you go ahead and get an, M an MRI of the hip and you see arthritis and maybe you also see some small cysts. Well the way that you would treat that hip is by treating the hip. The cysts are a result of the underlying arthritis in the hip joint. So you need to get that part better and then the cysts won't matter. They might even resolve. The same is true with a facet joint. Facet joints are synovial joints just like knees, hips, shoulder, fingers, toes. And just like those other joints, they can become arthritic, and one of the symptoms of arthritis can be the development of synovial cysts. Treating facet joint pain generally begins with physical therapy. Sometimes you inject the facet joint with steroid. Sometimes you end up burning the little sensory nerves that innervate the facet joint so that you no longer feel the inflammation coming from the facet joint. Now, I've done a whole video all about facet joint pain and how to treat it. So I'll leave an in-depth discussion of facet joint pain and treatment to that video, and I'll leave a link below in the description. Thank you for watching, and thank you for this video suggestion. I hope you found the video useful. Please remember to like this video and please consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. And as always, if you have any questions or comments or suggestions for a future video, then I'd love to hear from you in the comment section. I wish you all the best of health. Thank you.